Welcome to the Wealthimize video. Is it a good time to enter into REITs now? And what are the REITs that we should be looking at? I do understand that these are some of the questions that many people are asking now. Recently, I have done a REITs discussion with my investment gathering and I thought some of the information may be useful to you. So I have actually prepared the video to share and hopefully you can make better investment decision after watching the video. Now, before you enjoy the content, please read the disclaimer related to this video. Yes, uh, we will look at REITs. Uh, for REITs, I just do DCA. So I don't time the market for REITs. Uh, very similar to property. So I instead of I force saving the property, I actually force save in REITs. Uh, but this one is depend on my self-discipline. Uh. So every month I just buy so as a form of false saving. So which read will I actually look at today? Uh? Okay, so by the way, before we talk about which read to look at, uh, I just want to highlight this chart for, to you. Okay, where do you actually get this chart? Uh? So this is from the SGX website. So in this SGX website, in this chart, what it shows here is this. It shows the U spread. Uh? The blue line is the dividend U. The yellow line is the bond U. Uh. The difference between the blue and the yellow line is what we call the U spread, which is equal to the green line. And this red line here is the 10 year average U spread. So uh, as you can see, it's very clear now the U spread is actually quite low. Lah. It's lower than the 10 year average. So my point here is this, the reads, I know that the price has came down. The U has come up, but it's still not in a very attractive zone yet. Not because the REITs are not performing well. You can see that the dividend is going up. It's just that the bond U are still high. Uh, I know that a lot of you have been waiting. Is this the best time to buy REITs? The best time? No, uh, it's not time to rush into REITs yet. So when you want to do it now, uh, when the green line go above the red line, uh, uh, then you may actually want to consider but for my case, yeah, that's why I just stick to my dollar cost averaging. If not, nah, you know, sometimes you have to wait, 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 wait very long. Nah, wait very long. So, you no, know, it's okay. You know, this is the money I committed. I just want to put it there. Okay. There is no best solution. Nah. There's no perfect solution. So, I just stick to dollar cost averaging. Nah. So, in that sense, number one, I won't be buying a lot of REITs. Number two, I'll be very careful. Nah. I wouldn't want to take so much REITs on, on REITs. So I just want to set the background. Basically, I'll be very stringent. As much as possible, I'll just stick to my Akong reads. Ah. I want to play safe. It's not a time to be overly excited. Ah. So this is what happened here. So thank you so much. Ah. These are all the reads that you have been suggesting. So thank you so much for responding. I've actually asked for you all to give suggestions of what are some of the reads for me to look at. And these are whatever you all have submitted. Okay, so number one is this. I actually go and... Pick up all these indicators, uh, dividend yield, gearing ratio, interest, occupancy, dividend growth, MPI. Uh. So after just getting all this information, uh, the four below, Capital Land, Land Lease, Maple Tree, Suntech, I will actually avoid. Anybody can tell me why. Thank you so much. Uh, gearing ratio more than 40%. Uh. So for those who ask me this question, yep, hopefully you got answer. Uh. So basically, I think this is a time to be stringent. It's not a time whereby ah yeah doesn't matter lah okay the you the the reach you is so high it, it will cover no so I'll be I'll be quite stringent uh, okay so more than forty I'll screen up uh, so I actually write off the four already so the next thing I actually did is to find the fair you and uh, for those who are interested how I actually look for the fair you uh, this is how I actually do it I actually go and download the price. The daily price for this is Maple Tree Industrial. Uh. Then I find the average price for the year. Then after that, I go and get the dividend for the year. Okay, this dividend number. If you actually go to the website, they actually will give you a dividend number under investor relations distribution. So you can actually get the dividend. Then with that, I actually calculate the dividend you for that particular year. Then the next thing I do is I take out the outlier. 
for example, I think 4.4 and 6.2, they're outliers. So I take it out. Then I just average the rest. Lah. So the average U is 5.3%. And this is my fair U. Lah. If the fair U is 5.3%, current U is 5.91. Is the read cheap or expensive? Current U is higher than fair U is cheaper. So basically, Daiwa House, they only just listed, I think, last year. So I don't have enough data to calculate fair U. But nevertheless, you can see uh, uh, for a logistic read, it's actually quite attractive. Uh. Okay, then the rest is actually all higher than fair U. Uh. So basically to me, because I do dollar cost averaging anyway, so I won't be eliminating. Uh. So in fact, yeah, I've been asking myself, uh, which one is my favorite right now? very difficult for me to differentiate. Lah. And there's no need for me to differentiate because uh, I do dollar cost averaging. Okay, so these are the four I will eventually buy anyway. So if you really want to differentiate, now, maybe you can look at this point here, the dividend growth and the MPI growth. Lah. I am actually more concerned about the MPI growth. Lah. Okay, what does MPI growth tell us? Business expect. Lah. Okay, that means down here, uh, this one, Capital Land Ascender Street, uh, is actually the business is actually growing. Whereas Maple Tree Logistics, uh, that means the rental is actually not so good, it's actually shrinking. Uh. But then, how come uh, this one, the business growing, and yet the dividend is actually shrinking? Uh, what could be a possible reason? Thank you so much. Uh, the interest actually went up. Uh. So, unfortunately, I don't find a perfect one. Uh, whereby the MPI increases and dividend growth. Lah. So you can see it's either this one negative or also just nice. So I really cannot differentiate which one is the best. Okay, the, the one that is actually closer is actually Daiwa. It's actually the business is growing. The rental actually went up. The reason why it become negative is because the Japanese yen got weakened. Lah. Okay, if let's say just based on Japanese yen, right, the MPI actually went up. So I think this four is more or less quite similar. Uh, at this point in time, if you ask me, the Daiwa one is very attractive, but it's of course higher risk. Uh, okay, com relatively speaking. The other three all Akong one. Uh, so quite straightforward. I think should be quite okay. So this one is re really depends on your risk level. Like if let's say you're willing to take additional risk, given that it's quite a new read, relatively speaking, yeah, worth a try. Yeah, all the numbers are look good, but it's a new read. Like. We don't know what we don't know. Whereas the rest of the three is quite okay. So for me, my dollar cost averaging, this three I will definitely uh, eventually will buy. Like. like maybe today I buy Capital Land, one month later buy Maple Tree Industrial, one month buy Logistic. This one will depend on my risk appetite. Okay, I am actually quite comfortable. I'm actually quite comfortable to take some because uh, for over the past few years, in fact, two or three years, I've been very focused on account reads. I think I can take some of this risk. Okay, but if you think that no, your portfolio already a lot of not account reads, then it's maybe something you have to be careful of. Just a quick overview of what I've done. Number one, how do I sieve out? Okay, how do I actually get all this? These are all inputs from you. Okay, how do I sieve out? So basically, I look at the derivative test. I sieve out those that don't meet first. Left with this four. Then I compare with the fair U. Lah. So if I really want to differentiate further, I look at the dividend growth and the MPI growth. Lah. Okay, obviously, the one that both growing is the best. Uh, but at this point in time, you don't have a very clear winner. No? So that's how I how I sieve out my reads. Huh? Hope you enjoy the content. If what you have learned has been useful to you, please help to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can enjoy the content and at the same time motivates me to do more of such video. With that, happy investing!